Chairman. It's been about an hour and a half. Can we have a, like a 15 minute break? No. 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 Uh, I'll second his motion to take a recess, however. Uh, uh, it's been seconded to have a recess. Uh, I, I'll watch one for uh, five minutes. No. Okay, well, I mean, we're still going to vote on it. So we'll How long? Uh, it's not the matter. Five, 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 five minutes is what I'm saying. Those in favor of taking a five minute recess, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The nays have it. Next item business is 4.2.1, short time preserving world con history. Um, so I'll set the debate time for six minutes on this. Uh, uh, I'll not to the Mr. Chairman, I move the motion, uh, the resolution in the uh, agenda to uh, endorse the uh, Wilcon Heritage Organization, which has been founded to uh, maintain and, and preserve the Wilcon History Exhibit. Uh, there's a history, of, a short, very short history of the exhibit in the uh, handout, in the agenda. And if there are any questions, the reason for this is because there's a section of the Constitution uh, that suggests that uh, world cons that have a surplus should use them for the benefit of the world con. And we think that preserving our uh, historical artifacts is to the, to, uh, to the benefit of the world con in general. And therefore, we would encourage uh, and, and request the business meeting to encourage world cons with a surplus to donate. Are there any questions about what we are or what we do? If you would like to see what we have, we have about 90% of the, of the collection on display under the World Science Fiction Society banner in the exhibit hall. Is there any discussion? Uh, are, are your articles of incorporation available for Our articles of incorporation are on the Colorado Secretary of State website and available to anyone. If you search on Worldcon Heritage, uh, they'll, it'll pop up. I didn't bring a copy with me to the business meeting. Um, our, we're in the process of arranging to get a file, or applying for 501c3, but our paperwork isn't complete yet. So we hope by next year to be able to say that we are a public charity, but at the moment we are merely a uh, not-for-profit corporation. Point of inquiry? Yeah. Sorry. Is there a possibility you're going to continue add to this the problem of electronic preservation? Preserving electronic well, matter that is. The answer to that is that at the moment we're concentrating on the physical uh, artifacts, some of which are deteriorating and need work. Uh, our priorities would not be to preserve work on websites or at this point to, to do any of the electronic publications since we're concentrating on trying to, to uh, preserve the uh, more ephemeral and more fragile uh, publications and artifacts. But it's certainly within the charter that we could do that. Uh, at the moment we have a very limited amount uh, of cash and a very limited amount of resources in terms of people. If you're volunteering to help, please, uh, we have a website and you can contact us through that. I'd rather take my favorite. Uh, regarding the electronic preservation, oh, Lyndon, when, when you're done, there's a request for the sign up list on the FANAC.org oh, Fan, is very interested in preserving the electronic and sees FANAC.org and, and WHO are really uh, working in parallel and working quite cooperatively. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a member of both and I think that both are absolutely critical. If there's anyone in the room, by the way, who is interested in this, see me, see Joseph Clary, I don't think he's in the room, see Kemp. We're really, really interested in people working on this. What was the second organization you mentioned, Mark? FANAC. 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 Any further discussion on this resolution? Are there any objections to passing this resolution? Seeing none, it's adopted by unanimous consent. Yeah. 
4.2.2 is a resolution which merely instructs the Secretary to reorganize existing material so that the uh, heading numbers are different. It makes no change to the substance of anything. Um, I've set a limit of two minutes for this. Anybody want to say anything about it? Yeah? Yeah, this we can combine with the other. It's written in a way which crosses out and puts things in, but there's all the words are still there, all the sections are still there. They just number it differently. Okay, so that it will be essentially Yes, it, it doesn't change anything. It just trans transposes things that cause a more logical organization of part of the Constitution. Okay. Okay. Believed to be more logical. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to interact with any other amendment. Uh, may I just request that this be considered before the Hero Amendment? Since We're considering it right now. Oh. It's a resolution. We can do it. It's just an instruction to the Secretary. So is there any debate further questions or debate on this? Is there any objection to this? Seeing none by unanimous consent, the Secretary is so instructed in preparing the Constitution to hand up, pass on to the next World Bank. Next item is 4.2.3. <laughs> he was slightly cast in the Okay. I object to consideration. Uh, there's objection to consideration. Uh, those in favor of considering 4.2.3, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I do not believe that there's two thirds in the negative. So the motion will be considered. Um, I suggest a debate limit of uh, five minutes for this. Um, would the uh, neighbor or somebody wish to speak in favor? Anyone to speak against? Hold on. Seth Breitbart. It is clear from the history that the purpose of extending eligibility of individual works was for works that were not sufficiently known to the nominators at the end of the previous year so that they were too obscure and therefore were denied nomination that they might have deserved because they were not sufficiently well known. I think it is absolutely ludicrous to consider that this work was not sufficient or will not be sufficiently well known to the nominators. Is there a speech in favor of the motion? Not I remain Dave McCarty. Um, the, uh, the extensions in the in the case of, of Retro Hugo's, for the most part, don't make sense because yes, the the extra time that uh, that we get from the 75 years obviates any real need to, uh, to 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 allow people to find out about a work. The issue here is really one of boundary condition. This uh, Retro Hugo's that Lancon is that Lancon will be running are for the first. Retro Hugos that are available. There will be no retro Hugo. There will be no retro Hugos without significant changes to the Constitution for any year before 19 before for works before 1938. So this represents the only chance that these works have to ever be considered for a Hugo award. And as such, the question is really: Do we feel that these works deserve to, to be considered? And rather than be sticklers, we should embrace the joy, joy and soul of fandom and say yes, these things deserve to be considered. And that's really it.
this particular one is to for one specific work and passing something for one specific work I think is unreasonable. Uh, um, another way of looking at it is um, thinking of the retrofugus as what might have won in the year had the Hugo's been held in that year, and in that case, had the Hugo's been held in that year with the current rules, it would have been eligible. Still Perry Emery. Uh, lots of things were published before there were Hugo's. They don't have a chance. That's just too bad. That's life. <laughs> Priscilla Alston. Um, that's true what Perry Ann says. Well, we don't necessarily have a chance to give everything that was published before 1938, 1937, or whatever, a, a chance to get a new go. And uh, in this particular case, um, The Hobbit was a very formative book for many of us. It probably would have won a new go if it had been eligible at that time. I think we should be allowed to give it a chance, since uh, it does fall within our purview. I'm in favor of Dr. Reagan for this week. I'm Alex Von Thorne. I'm a huge fan of The Hobbit, and I'm sure uh, the 1938 Worldcon would have uh, voted for it for a Hugo. Of course, there was no 1938 Worldcon. That's an alternate timeline. And, and I, I just consider this to be out of scope of this organization. Are there any further speeches? Time's up in any case, so I guess it's off the so, uh, we'll do a serpentine vote here, okay? Um, so the question is on extending the uh, retrohugo eligibility of the Hobbit uh, as in this motion. So, uh, all those in favor of extending eligibility... Mr. Chairman, yes? Mr. Chairman, before you take the vote, I, want, I, did, I meant to do this earlier, sure. I'd like a ruling from the chair on the grounds of is it even legal for us to extend eligibility on retro Hugo's un under our constitution? I, it, it just so we get it into the rulings continue effect. I am not aware of anything that would make it, uh, uh, which would, anything in the constitution which would prohibit this. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to appeal it. I, I talked about it earlier. I'm not okay, gonna... those in favor, please stand. Uh, so I was suggesting that we do it, uh, do the, the uh, don't need sir. To. It's obvious. What? Uh, it uh, okay, well, let me just do a quick thing. Uh, why don't you be seated, those opposed? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there being less than three quarters in favor, the motion fails. Um, the last item in section four is 4.2.4, a similar motion. Um, Chair? Yes? Objection. Is an objection to consideration to 4.2.4. Uh, those in favor of considering, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. There being more than two-thirds in the negative, the uh, motion will not be considered. Three-quarters? No. No, no. You, you would have need, it is a, the objection to consideration is two-thirds, which is it's a different thing. Um, if it had been considered, it would have taken three-quarters to adopt it. The objection passed? The objection? The objection was sustained. There's rule. So it will not be considered. So, um, we're now to section two. Kevin. Mr. Chairman, yes. there has been a motion foreshadowed to appoint a committee. Would this be the appropriate time for that to be added to the agenda? Since this is the end of resolutions and that's what it effect, oh, right. in effect is. Um, sure. Uh, you want me to try it? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Do you know what they want? Not exactly. Well, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I continue to be Kevin Stanley. Uh, it is a little bit difficult to get any nuance in 120 or 170 characters, whatever it is, but Mr. Chairman, I ask the Chair's approval to introduce a resolution creating a committee to be appointed by the Chair 
to a study proposals for young adult Hugos and related matters to prepare a report to submit to the Long Con 3 business meeting. No, not one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yes. One. It, okay. and, and I ask somebody to second this motion. Second. Okay. Yeah. Now. Uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll consent to this motion. Uh, and uh, so I guess it is uh, open for debate. Mr. Chairman, um, although I am not terribly interested in being chairman of such a committee, uh, as a parliamentary advisor to many people, uh, I have been asked repeatedly what they can do at this point, and I think that it would be perhaps, given the contentious nature of this matter, and noting the fact that the last time it came to a vote on the substantive issue, although it failed, it did not fail overwhelmingly or by greater than two-thirds, there is interest in this subject. We have been unable to come up with anything approaching a workable proposal that can get past the business meeting. It is possible, I believe, but not necessarily absolutely the case, that we can, by having a study committee on this, come up with something that might work. I'd like to remind the members of this meeting that it took us nearly a decade to get a best dramatic presentation split that was acceptable to two business meetings in a row. And therefore, I encourage us to create this committee and have those people who have an interest in this subject step forward to operate it and come up with the discussions. I do agree to consent to be appointed to it as a member of it to help with the technical issues. Thank you. Any further stations, uh, speeches on this motion to create a committee to be appointed by the chair to study young adult Hugo's and report to the Hong Kong three business meeting? Is there any objection to this motion? Seeing none, by unanimous consent, I will appoint such a committee and announce the members later. So we're now on section two of the agenda, World Con Reports. Sorry, can I ask a question, please? Yes, sir. okay. I'm sorry, point, just a clarification. Sure. Out. On this committee, will young adults be allowed to be on it? Uh, yeah, the question was, will young adults be allowed to be on it? And it's supported by the uh, chair. There's actually no age restrictions concerning participation in the World Science Fiction Society business meeting. I, I have in the past, while presiding, allowed um, minors to make motions and uh, vote and so forth. Um, so, uh, yes, they would. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, that I'll necessarily appoint such a person. But, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I forgot because we have to do it on each committee. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that the uh, proposal be modified uh, to allow the chairman of the committee to uh, augment the membership of the committee at the chair's discretion. Yeah, that's our unanimous consent, please. That's, that's our usual practice to allow chairs of business meeting committees to appoint uh, additional members. And that, is there any objection to that? I've seen none. Uh, no, so that's part of the enabling motion. Yes? Uh, clarification. I was wanting to know how people would volunteer to be on this committee. I, I will, people will volunteer by contacting me uh, before the end of the business meeting. So, and I typically, um, committee memberships are announced at the end of the uh, Either maybe is meeting tomorrow or, or uh, the site selection meeting. He says there will be there are a number of committees and I uh, typically consult with people on, on what the appropriate membership is or membership adjustments in their previously existing committees and announce this all towards the end of the uh, site selection meeting. Okay. Yes. Point of privilege. Point of privilege. What is the state your point of privilege? Would all of the Journey Planet Pie meet outside after the meeting? We're going to try and get a photo op. Thank you. Full <laughs> 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 um, report. Uh, first is the Millennium Full Con report. Is there a representative uh, to do that report? Off. The report is contained in the package. The additional page that was put out this morning is not literally a financial report, but is intended as an addendum to show that the committee has continued to make donations to various world cons beyond the point in time that was required by the pass along funds. And for those people who are not aware, I will reiterate, it is our intention once we settle the tax issue, which many of you are aware of, to completely dispose of any remaining funds by making donations to 
acceptable World Cotton groups. There are a number of such groups which have asked for funds, and at this point in time, I cannot commit to any of them in particular. But obviously, as soon as we get the notification as to how much money is available, we will let the affected groups know, and then they can certainly request distributions. Um, I realize you can't make any certain predictions when you're dealing with the government, but do you have a guess as to when it's likely this to be settled? No. I mean, my fondest wish would have been it was settled by now. My next fondest wish is that it's settled by next World Cup. Yeah. Okay. But I, as you say, I'm in no control to push on this. So we have asked for relief, and we are not going to make, basically, you know, make ourselves obnoxious to the government. We're going to allow them to hopefully, you know, be, be merciful to us. There are different kinds of mercy. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I would like to encourage Millville to, to give some of that money to uh, Yokohama, especially since it says no record is found of ever having given any money. Yokohama is a specific case similar to what I just stated. There is a question, at least that has been given to me, as to whether it is legal for any World Con group to donate money as a 501c3 to Yokohama. I do not know that that has ever been settled. I know it was under investigation. I don't know what the outcome was. If it has been proven that it is permissible for us to do so, we would certainly consider giving money to them. Does, I, does Andrew want to answer that on the specific case? I, 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 can, I can answer the point of your question now. I can answer it when the in 2007. That would be better. Uh, the latter. You call how I have the end. It's directly relevant to the question whether the explanation could be made. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Pomeranz, who's well known to many of you, who is uh, an expert in this area, has uh, given us uh, his advice on this. Uh, his advice on this is that while there is no definite positive precedent, um, he and all the people he has uh, consulted in, who are experts in this area have indicated that there is no, definitely no strong rule against this, um, and that um, as far as he is concerned, his, his advice is that it would be perfectly reasonable to do so, particularly in the light of the fact that uh, such donations happened before um, the convention and were not queried in any way um, by the IRS in, in the reports submitted to them by um, those groups passing on funds um, to JASFIC, the parent organisation. <coughs> So, as far as, as far as the advice we have is, it, it's not positively confirmed, there is no precedent for doing so, uh, but he can find no reasonable grounds for, for objection to it. Well, this is new information to me, I thank you, and I will pass it on to the rest of the committee. I'd like to commend Mr. Dashoff for coming here and actually being the first person to publicly discuss the state of Mill Hill um, uh, finances. Uh, we've been waiting for a long time, even though you don't have a lot of information. Thank you very much. Somebody over here had a question. I don't know who was. Uh, can you just clarify which agency of the, I believe, U.S. government it is that you're waiting on? IRS. <laughs> <laughs> the big one. <laughs> Is, you, is your issue simply federal, or is it state? Is your issue federal, or is it state and federal? It's federal. Any further questions? The next report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, LA Con Four. Is there a representative to speak? Still, I'm um, Mr. Inouye, the chair of Nippon 2007, isn't attending, so I'm uh, 
I can only step. Um, I have one point of clarification uh, that was raised after the uh, documents were submitted as to the interpretation um, of one of the terms. Um, paid donations are those which have gone through JASFIC, the parent organisation's books, and have paid to the creditors. Collected donations are those held by various groups on behalf um, of JASFIC, um, have not yet been paid to JASFIC, but have been um, positively confirmed that they will be paid to JASFIC at an appropriate time. The reason they have not yet been paid through is we are trying to gather the entire amount and pay them through in one go. In particular, the uh, donation trades abroad um, are being held for transfer to minimise transfer fees by only making a single transfer from each currency, uh, which I think is a sensible move. Um, there is also the, the well, we can't predict what the uh, um, exchange rates will do, the, the current direction of movement um, of the yen is to weaken, and therefore um, delaying slightly we, uh, will also increase the amount of yen, much likely, um, that are received in yen from those uh, overseas donations. Uh, I can take other, other questions. Next, as uh, anticipation. The last time I, I checked, I'm still really walling. Um, <laughs> I would like to add uh, one point of information. If you look at note number three, um, 1,666 had been set aside for Nippon 2006 as part of the matching grant announced at Smothcon 2012. It mentions we still need to confirm this amount with the other donor. The other donor was uh, Renovation. They report in their financial report a donation of $5,000. Uh, the matching grant we had announced was $1 for every, that we would match $1 for every three donated, therefore the 1,666. We had not, uh, due to due diligence, we need to check with the donator. We had not heard from them, but we do consider the, their financial report as enough confirmation for us to um, be able to give the money to Nippon when the time comes. I do encourage any financial organization that uh, decides to help Nippon 2007 out to contact us as soon as possible, letting us know uh, the amount of the payment and when it was done so that we can include that in our matching grant as soon as possible and not always have to wait for the next business meeting. Thank you. Any questions? Colin Harris, <coughs> setting aside the Nippon grant, which I'm sure we're very appreciative, but current rates of disbursement, you will complete disbursement in 2030. Given, you know, we have many upcoming world gymnastics, etc. Microphone, microphone. From the start, but just from the, from the start. From Colin Harris. Um, setting aside the Nippon grant that I'm sure everybody appreciates, at current rates of disbursement, you will have funds to give out until 2030. Um, personally, I believe, and many recent conventions have made progress towards saying, that it's a good idea to get funds back into circulation within the Spanish community within a reasonably short time, say three to five years. <laughs> Can I suggest, or perhaps ask your opinion on whether you're looking to increase the rate of disbursement, given there are many world cons, some in very expensive cities. <laughs> 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 I will point out that this year was actually the lowest year of our disbursement. It just so happened that way. Um, we we tend to have a faster rate. It just things happen this way this year. Um, I need to propose. You know, any grant proposals have to go through the board of Cansmoth. I cannot answer yay or nay on any of these things. I can only pass them to the board for consideration. Any other comments? Thank you for the report. So, I'm Stephen Boucher, um, the VSFC um, board basically met, um, we have dispersed the last of our funds, we are done with our free. <laughs> I've been one who prepared the report. You probably mentioned that they were. This was Australian dollars. They were.
was actually a dollar eight U.S. at the time we distributed for every dollar. So we distributed more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? No. Good. Yes. You say was wound up as of 30 September 2013. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's an international decline. 2012. I'm sorry. What? It's an international decline. <laughs> may, may I point out that I'm, nobody had written a report that I did one Monday night to get it to, right. to, get it to the committee of the. We, we pretty much finished last year, so we kind of lost a lot of interest. <laughs> the, rec the records were in storage in the Belmont. I apologize for the Okay, so then the date should be full, 2012. Right. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, renovation? Uh, representative? So it appear not.